I once thought I could save the world. Now look at it. Hey, hey! Welcome back to Bananas in Japan. Today we are checking out Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which is an action role-playing video game developed by Eidos Montreal and published worldwide by Square Enix in August 2016 for Windows, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. It's the fourth game in the Deus Ex series and a sequel to the 2011 game Deus Ex Human Revolution. Augmented people all over the world flew into a psychotic killing spree, causing the greatest loss of life in recent history. Sometimes, you just have to let go, and embrace what you've become. You are controlling an augmented Interpol agent by the name of Adam Jensen, and you're trying to keep the peace in a downtrodden and chaotic Prague. There are multiple parties in play that are trying to see the segregation of these augmented individuals from normal society, and ultimately to the downfall of them. Deus Ex is very much a mixture of genres. It's neither a shooter, nor a stealth game, or an open world game, or a choice based game. It's a mixture of all of these and it really allows you to play the game the way you want. You can either play a non-lethal way without killing anyone through the entire game or you can just go all guns out blazing. Or you can attack them with a rubbish pit. That seems to scare them. A lot of what you do has consequences as well in terms of how you talk to people, the actions you take, it permeates the rest of the game. So these choices matter. These characters may die because of your slow and stealthy tactics. You can also choose who to accuse and apprehend in certain instances. The truth is we're not even close, not yet. So if you add up this mixture of game genres and you add this huge, dense city of Prague into the mixture, then you have an incredible amount of choices, an incredible amount of exploring to do. It really makes this city alive. This game eventually was critically acclaimed by critics after its release, but unfortunately the game uh, in its pre-release was handled so haphazardly that it was no surprise actually that this wasn't much of a commercial success. Uh, in the marketing, Square Enix decided that Apartheid and Black Lives Matters would be good themes to compare it to, uh, which obviously is incredibly tone deaf and incredibly insensitive at best. Then they further estranged fans by including confusing and exploitative pre-order tiers, then <laughs> it, it go, the list goes on. During development, the publisher told the developer that two months prior to release they had to include a lot of microtransactions, and this two-month period is key time for developers to polish gameplay and visuals. They really depend on that time to make it, make it look good. Unfortunately, you can really tell that some of the character models don't look as good as brushed up as they should be, and this is partly why. Not only that, but the publisher wanted to make this the second of a trilogy and therefore cut the game in half almost to achieve that, and it explains why there's an explicably a abrupt ending to the game. Which is even more unfortunate because Square Enix have decided not to make the third entry to the trilogy because of poor sales. Um, and it's a big shame because this game really is interesting, Prague is a great world to explore. So I recommend that you get it if it's on offer, but keep in mind that the ending will catch you off guard. Uh, you open a door and it says new game plus has been unlocked and you, <laughs> you have no idea why that's the case. Olivier's already paid you for a safe trip out of here. Now I'm gonna tip extra, just to make sure she gets a smooth ride. Money talks, right? Always. All right, friend. But you need to leave right now. Do that, and everybody wins.